Boris Dar or Pronoun Dar Every Pony. This is Brony Dan. It's not original, but uh, you try coming up originality these days. <sighs> well, folks, it has come to this. Time for me to look at what was probably the most controversial project in the MLP community. A movie that is still to this day debated on whether or not this project should have even been started. I'm of course talking about... Equestria Girls. Now, if you were around in 2013 when this movie was announced, you will certainly remember the backlash surrounding it. People were just getting over hating the show for giving Twilight Sparkle wings at the end of season 3, and now they were releasing a My Little Pony movie that wasn't even going to be set in the show's universe. There were a lot of concerns, and for some it is still the black sheep of the fandom. Now, I will be honest, I have not seen this movie since it first came out, so I'm going into this movie with a fresh perspective. So let's take a look at... Equestria Girls. So the movie begins... in the Crystal Empire, and all the characters are still as ponies. Wait, so you mean this movie is not going in the direction that we all feared it would? I'm getting my hopes too high, aren't I? Apparently, they're all here for Twilight's first summit since becoming the Princess of Friendship. Which is a summit that we never actually see, because the moment they arrive, Celestia decided it's time to go to bed. Even though it looks like it's barely sunset. Do you just want to make Luna work overtime or something, Celestia? I guess so, because it's dark the moment they get up to their rooms, and Twilight starts having concerns about her new role as princess. Just because I have this crown and these wings, it doesn't mean I'll be a good leader. I don't know, Twilight. I mean, you have been leading your friends through some tough shit in the past. I think you've got it covered. However, that night, a cloaked figure sneaks into Twilight's bedroom with the intent on stealing Twilight's crown, but instead manages to wake every pony up as she makes her escape with the crown through a magic mirror. But who was this strange unicorn? Sunset Shimmer, a former student of mine. She began her studies with me not long before Twilight. But when she did not get what she wanted as quickly as she liked, she turned cruel and dishonest. Yes, we have reached the point where all our villains will have similar names to Twilight Sparkle so that we can create a parallel between the two of you. Well, as long as it's the only time we do this, we make no promises. So now that Sunset Shimmer has stolen the crown and has now gone through the mirror to an alternate dimension, Twilight is now given the task of going in there and getting the crown back. There are so many questions raised from this scene. 1. How did Sunset Shimmer know there was a crown to steal? 2. How did she know what said crown looked like in order to create a replica? 3. You see that the portal opens every 30 moons, but what does that mean? Do you mean 30 moon cycles or do you mean it opens once a month? 4. Was there any specific reason for moving the mirror all the way from Cantalot to the Crystal Empire other than just the plot demanded it? 5. If you aren't allowing the rest of the main six to accompany Twilight, then what would happen if the situation escalates to the point where she needs to use the elements of harmony? You've just sent your student and new princess to her possible death! And finally, question 6. Why the fuck do you have a mirror that goes to an alternate dimension if you have no intention of going into the alternate dimension? It's just there to be a deus ex machina! We are barely 10 minutes into this thing! And the plot holes are coming in fast. Pray for me, people. Pray for me. So with a three-day period to finish her mission, Twilight and Spike head through the portal and... Are you a dog? I think so. But I have no idea what you are. Huh? have fulfilled every fan's hopes and dreams of dating Twilight without it seeming wrong in their eyes. So yeah, it turns out this alternative dimension is, of course, ours. Or at least I think it's ours, since the skin colors make me think of the same universe as Doug. And Twilight decides to search the school. And it is here that we meet the one, the only, the legend that is... Flash Century. 
Let the choirs of hateful and angry fanboys slaughter thee to thy painful rest. Oh, how does one describe this oh-so-despised character? The fact that he serves no purpose of the just be a good-looking love interest. The fact that his personality is so bland it makes Beige look like a Van Gogh. Or what is perhaps the most unforgivable of crimes? He stole your waifu. Oh, come on, that's the only reason you guys hate him! Anyway, we turned the corner and... Well, I did, and I was about to get it before you swooped in and ruined everything. Oh yeah, I have to keep reminding myself. Sunset Shimmer is the villain! And she was one of the worst villains in the entire series. In a show that had the embodiment of nightmares and darkness, the god of chaos, a race of bug ponies who fed off love, and a thought-to-be-deceased dictator with a crystal addiction, this was really the best they could come up with for their first movie? A high school bully who has no real motivation for her actions other than just showing that she's the bad guy in all this? Oh, and you have to give her snips and snails as her incompetent lackeys. This is why you should stick to the magical world, people. You can't handle reality well. So after helping this version of Fluttershy, Twilight goes to visit... Principal Celestia, who explains that the crown will be used for the fall formal, and the only way to get it is to be crowned, you guessed it, Princess. So the longer this movie goes on, we are drifting away from the magical ponies and mythical creatures, and more into a high school drama. You know, sometimes I can sympathise with Lauren Fouts into why she likes to believe this universe does not exist in her eyes. You asked me if I was interested in running for princess. Can anyone run? Yes, you just need to let the head of the fall formal planning committee know you'd like to be on the ballot. I am just going to let this girl who I know is not a member of my school with no information on her whatsoever to casually walk around and compete for a crown that we know is not ours. I am sure there will be no repercussions from this. Idiot! So after we are reintroduced to Pinkie Pie and Applejack, Twilight naturally heads to the library. Let's hope somebody finds this funny, because I certainly don't. Apparently the entire school seems to think it's funny, as it turns out Snips and Snails filmed this and had it posted all over the internet. So the rest of the group decide to help Twilight overcome this. The only problem is they don't seem to like each other in this universe. And why is that? Because of fake texts and emails all sent by Sunset Shimmer. So is Sunset just a really good hacker if she was able to get all their phone numbers and emails? And this whole thing is solved disgustingly easily. I'm still trying to comprehend that none of you thought of talking about all of this until Twilight came along. <sighs> Look, there is stubbornness and then there is stupidity on your part. So now we have the whole gang back together, they all agree to help Twilight win over the school in order to win the vote as... Ugh, Princess of the Fall Formal. And how do they plan to do this? With possibly the most annoying song in the entire franchise. Okay, look. I haven't mentioned the songs up to this point, and here's why. They are just not worth talking about because, personally, I find them sounding quite dull. This, on the other hand, is just trying way too hard to be upbeat and catchy that is on par with High School Musical of ear-bleeding annoyance. I mean, seriously, why are you trying to be like High School Musical? And it works! Yeah, these kids are so easy to sway into your favor that all you need is a song and they'll bow to your every whim. I wouldn't mind so much except that the situation happens again in the sequel, albeit to a much better song. I think this canteen is where basic thinking goes to die. But Sunset hasn't given up yet as she blames Twilight for wrecking the gym where the formal is being held. However, Flash manages to clear her name. Oh, now, you see their haters? Flash actually does something good. Granted, it's the only thing he ever does in the movies, but it's something. 
But that means the former has been postponed until it is sorted out, which means Twella has to confess the truth to her new friends. You're from an alternate world and you're a pony princess there and the crown actually has a magical element embedded in it that helps power up other magical elements and without it they don't work anymore and you need them to help protect your magical world. And if you don't get the crown tonight, you'll be stuck in this world and you won't be able to get back for like a really, really long time. Or are the pinky just blurted out? How come when the Pinkie Pie in the show does something like this, I'm perfectly fine, but yeah, when it's this version's Pinkie Pie, I just end up being concerned for the safety of everybody around her. So after they manage to clear up the gym, which means that the formal is back on, which gives Hasbro the chance to sell more toys. All these and more are available at your local Toys R Us and Smiths. The princess of this year's fall formal is... Oh, man, it's so awesome! Twilight Sparkle! Well, it looks like everything's going smoothly, but we've still got about 20 minutes of film left, so Sensor decides to use that time to give Twilight an ultimatum. Give me the crown, and you can go back to Equestria tonight. Or keep it, and never go home. Okay, look, we know the portal isn't closed yet, Sunset. If you swing that sledgehammer at it, you're just going to be sending that thing right into Equestria. Don't question my ill-thought logic. Well, excuse me for it being ill-thought. So after a game of hot potato with the crown, of course, Sunset gets it and transforms into a... Oh, well, she puts it best in the sequel, a she-demon. So now, what's her plan? I was bluffing when I said I was going to destroy the portal. I don't want to rule this pathetic little high school. I want Equestria. And with my own little teenage army behind me, I'm going to get it. This plan is... I have no words for it. This is the stupidest plan you could come up with. I mean... Seriously, Sunset, this is why people hate you as a villain. You don't think things through. First of all, what are zombie teenagers going to do? You've just made them more gormless and stupid than your average teenager already is. Secondly, once you go through the portal, you're going to have to deal with three princesses and the remaining bearers of the elements of harmony, and they are going to use their resources to kick you and your ill-equipped minions' asses back through the portal. Look, we're near the end. Let's just... Get to the resolution quickly. Twilight and her friends magically pony up. Don't mock me, that's how they describe it. Sunset is now defeated, is now sorry for what she's done. Twilight gets her crown back with a bullshit speech from Celestia, goes back to normality in Equestria, and Flash's pony form appears, making fans hate him even more. But he's only limited to this movie, right? The Duke and Duchess of Mertonia. was shit! I can't articulate any other word for it, it's just shit, shit, shit! The story is completely rushed and generic, the songs are bland and forgettable, Sunset Shimmer is the textbook example of how not to be a villain, Flash is Flash, and the plot holes just keep piling up as it goes on. I can now understand why people consider this the black sheep in the series, it's a bad memory we'd all want to forget. However, we can't forget about it because we are constantly reminded of it with the sequel that came out, which was much better. Oi! Well, this is Brony Dan saying... Nosta. Zombie teenagers! Jump up, make a sound. Stomp your hoofs, turn around. Start now, make a change. Gonna come around. Make a sound, hey. stop your hurt.